Hello. Hello. It's so good to see you, Congresswoman Williams. Good to see you again, twice in one day. No, we just can't get enough of you or the great state of Georgia and the great city of Atlanta. It is I so mean, good but to see you. for what better cause than voting rights? Exactly. And I am so excited to talk about that this evening. I want to say welcome to everyone that is uh, joining us and kind of uh, jumping into this conversation. Um, why don't I just start us off by um, introducing today's topic and introducing you. Um, Let's go. More, so, you know, we're very excited. <laughs> uh, so good evening, everyone. Uh, and welcome to the the to Justice Now, sponsored by the National Urban League. I am your host, Jerrica Richardson, and I serve as a Senior Vice President for Equitable Justice and Strategic Initiatives at the League. Um, and this and tonight we are so excited because we have on Representative Nakima Williams, the Congresswoman from the great state of Georgia, representing Georgia's fifth district the birthplace of the civil rights movement, of the civil rights movement. And, you know, tonight is a, a really special episode and edition of our show uh, because I am here in Georgia uh, and we are here to jump in and talk about the state of Black America and what we all must do to reclaim our votes. So earlier today, the National Urban League actually issued its State of Black America right here in Atlanta uh, at Clark Atlanta University, uh, one of the great institutions that are as part of the Atlanta University Center. And we, we shared that information. Um, and really the title of this year's State of Black America for 2022 is the plot to destroy democracy which is exactly why we needed to be here at Georgia, which we all know is ground zero uh, for voter suppression. And I wanna, I wanna jump in and talk to you, uh, Representative Williams, because you clearly uh, have a huge task um, with all the suppressive voting measures that have popped up uh, in Georgia. And prior to your current rule, you actually served in the Georgia Senate. Uh, so I think some of the some of the times when we have these conversations about voting and policy, uh, folks really focus on what's happening on the national level. But we all know that all politics is local and we have to keep our eye on what's happening in states like Georgia and Texas and Florida and so many other places. So why don't you tell us a little bit about some of these suppressive measures that have passed in Georgia? and really what we need to be paying attention to, how can we combat them here? Oh, we can't hear you. Can you? Yes, hear you right now. Can you? Yes? Yes. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> because I want everybody to hear what I have to say because we're talking about voting rights, y'all, and this is a serious conversation this is something that we need to be talking about more. I am so glad that the National Urban League launched the Reclaim Your Vote rally right at the Atlanta University Center because we have to start with young voters. We have to make sure that we're educating people about these new changes. So let me give you a little precursor on what happened, where we are, okay. and then we'll talk about where we're going. Good? Sounds great. So we all saw what happened in Georgia in 2020. Voters showed up to the polls, especially Black voters, young voters, first-time voters, and y'all, we flexed our power. We made sure that everyone on the ballot knew who elected them. The people were in charge. We showed up in force, and we sent Georgia's 16 electoral college votes to President Joe Biden. And then fast forward, we have these two little Senate races on the ballot. Y'all might have heard about my two U.S. Senators, Senator Raphael Warnock and Senator John Ossoff. They were in a runoff and people were like, oh, black people especially aren't going to show back up to vote in a runoff. And we shocked the nation when we mm -hmm. showed back up to vote in the runoff election and elected the first black man and the first Jewish man from Georgia in the deep south to the United States Senate. Well, that kind of put a little flag on the state of Georgia 
because we played by their rules and we won by using our voice, using our vote, and using our power. We immediately saw state legislatures, not just in Georgia, but all over the country, 48 states introduced some sort of voter suppression legislation, 48. And Georgia was the poster child. So we were everything good about democracy on one hand, and then everything that's bad about democracy on the other hand. And our state legislature introduced this bill, um, SB 202, which they're not requiring us to count jelly beans in a jar anymore, Jerrica, but let me tell you that they are seeking the same results. I'm a black woman from the South, so I know exactly what their intent is. And so they made sure that with precision, they put laws in place that would only impact the areas like Atlanta. So in my home county, Fulton County, where Atlanta is, we were specifically targeted by this new voter suppression law. We had long lines in the primary run in the primary elections. And so organizations got creative and they would bring food and water and entertainment. Let's make it fun. Voting became an experience. So you know what they did? They made it illegal for us to give food and water to people waiting in line to vote. Illegal. And then drop boxes. So drop boxes were meant to make it more convenient. People who work shifts, people who work overnight, people who are just busy and want to drop their ballot off and go on with their life, but they still want to be a part of our democracy. Drop boxes in Fulton County were plentiful. And they were outside, you dropped them off and you kept going and they were 24 hours a day. But you know what they did? They said, oh, drop boxes can now only be inside of the building and they're only gonna be available between the hours of nine to five. Wow. Which is horrible I mean, for folks that have jobs that are from nine to five. And I mean, all of this really, we're just, we're still in the middle of a pandemic, right? And we saw so still many- in the midst of a pandemic. So many voters were voting in untraditional ways and making use of these drop boxes and mail-in ballots and, and all of those things. Because we should always be making it more convenient and easier for people to vote, not harder. And that's what we saw during the pandemic. People found ways that they had never had access before to how, to how to vote. And it increased voter turnout. And so now to go back after the fact, and say, well, no, too many people showed up to vote. So we're going to change the rules. That's exactly what happened here in Georgia. And so then we have to look at what are we going to do? Because the state legislatures are what they are. The bills have been introduced and signed into law. And so the next step was, well, I, uh, I'm of the mindset as a member of Congress, as someone who is a voting rights advocate, that we should have a standard a standard to the right to vote in this country, no matter where you live, no matter your zip code, that your access to the ballot should be standardized. And so we introduced the Freedom to Vote Act, the For the People Act, and the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act. And all three of them passed the United States House of Representatives, and we sent them, sent them to the Senate. Now, my two senators are great. But we all know that we didn't have enough votes to get it over the finish line in the United States Senate. So we have some work to do. We have some serious work to do. And I'm not giving up because Congressman Lewis, my predecessor in this seat, taught us that this work is not about a day or a month or a year. This is the movement for a lifetime. And we have to continue to do this work to make sure that we're securing the right to vote. Thank you for that. We definitely have to continue doing the work. But I have to admit, you know, I'm really frustrated because when we're talking about the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act, so much of this uh, in the past, the Voting Rights Act has had bipartisan support. Now, I interned for John Lewis and Congressman Lewis, and I remember it passing back then. So what's changed now? I mean, what's different now? Is it just that folks are really figuring it out, how to be able to access democracy, and now people want to change the game? So, I mean, that is a clear contrast. More people showed up to vote, and then all of a sudden, we needed to change the rules to voting. And we, we're seeing that over and over. And then it even spilled over into 
the redistricting that we have been seeing all across the country with the gerrymandering. We saw that happen right here in my home state of Georgia with the congressional district that Lucy McBath won, Georgia's sixth congressional district. They redrew the lines so that no Democrat would be able to win in that district, drawing a black woman out of her district, making it nearly impossible for her to win. Mm -hmm. And so this isn't about actual people having a voice and their government and their democracy. This is about one party in this country who is determined to keep control of power. And so that's why even with these new laws on the books, Jericho, we have work to do. We have to educate people. We have to remind people to check their voter registration or register to vote if they're not registered. But check your voter registration and make sure that it's up to date. Make sure you haven't been purged from the voter rolls because while we shouldn't have to organize ourselves out of voter suppression, these are the cards that we've been dealt and we still have to show up to vote. We have to do the work in spite of. Absolutely, and, and I will say I experienced it for firsthand almost 20 years ago in the year 2000, being here in your district uh, and showing up and finding my name and the names of many of my classmates not on the list. Now, back then, they didn't even have provisional ballots. Uh, so, so these are things that, you know, are cyclical. We see them time and time again, and we have to learn from each iteration. You know, it's critically important. And I'm glad you raised Congresswoman McBath. For all of those who remember, she really is one of the mothers of the movement for our community. Uh, and as we're talking about social justice, as we're talking about gun violence in our country, as we're talking about really just fair and free access, you know, Congresswoman McBath was a, a breath of fresh air. She was a shining light who has been really pushing uh, for social justice in this country and others. And to see someone like that come under attack through gerrymandering and, and, and other measures is just it's unfortunate and it's frustrating. And it's a reminder of why we have to stay engaged and why we must pay attention. Because you know, oftentimes in our community, there's this huge push when we have national elections, when we're talking about the presidential elections, but we have midterms coming right around the corner. And we have to make sure that folks show up for those elections, but also show up for their state and local elections. You know, it's important what we see happening in the legislature in Georgia in Texas, in Florida, it matters. And we have the power to change that. We have the power to prevent things like this from happening. So, you know, I want folks to remember that accountability is important and is a responsibility for all of us. Um, I wanna take a step back though, Congresswoman, and, you know, hear a little bit more from you about what you think the state of black America is in Georgia or nationally as a whole. You know, so often um, we see our leaders on TV, we, you know, we read about them in the newspapers, but very seldom do we have the opportunity to connect with them on a one-on-one -on -one level and the way IG Live is giving us that opportunity now. So I really want folks to kind of hear from you, hear from you about what's on your mind and what you think it's important that we think about as we try to uh, ensure uh, that we have adequate access to the ballot box, but what are the issues that we should be focusing on? What's important for our community right now? So I think um, focusing and centering this conversation because we're in Georgia, we're in Atlanta right now, and we, when we're talking about voting and access, I always say it shouldn't be dependent upon your zip code or your bank account. And that bank mm -hmm. account piece is really critical because Atlanta has the largest racial wealth gap in the country, Atlanta, Georgia. And so we have to continue to address the economic justice piece of all of this and how that impacts us as a people. And so I represent the largest consortium of HBCUs in the country. And so, you know, this is a Spelman alum. Yes. The Atlanta University Center is centered right in the heart of Georgia's 5th Congressional District. I'm a third generation HBCU alum myself. Shout out to my HBCU Talladega College. And so I know that we have to continue to address the racial wealth gap in this country. And I look at things like the outsized proportion of student loan debt that Black boroughs have in this country, how that impacts 
our ability to get a mortgage and buy a home. I know that my local Urban League, Urban League of Greater Atlanta, shout out to my president, Nancy Flake Johnson, who they do a great job on educating people on home ownership, how to buy a home, how to go through the processes and make sure that you're ready. But we have to start before that and make sure that we are addressing the root causes of this racial wealth gap in our country. I'm on the House Financial Services Committee is one of the things that I am focused on, making sure that we are addressing things that are gonna improve our everyday lives because I'm tired of our people just working to survive. We wanna thrive. And so that comes with us being able to choose leaders that are gonna look out for us. So all of this is interconnected and goes back to us having free and fair access to the ballot box to choose leaders that are gonna give us that ability to thrive and not just survive. I love that, thrive and not survive. You know, it was so important for us to be in the Atlanta University Center today with young, newer voters um, because they have issues that they care about. There are many issues that we all care about, but you know, I know one, one of the big ones for them are student loans. That's, it's still a big one for me. Uh, and it's me a huge- too, as a member of Congress. It's a huge challenge, and that's why it's so important for us to not just go vote and not just show up, but show up with a plan in mind, showing up, having done the research and the work, and being clear about who we're voting for, knowing what they stand for and what they don't stand for. I mean, one of the things that we've done at the National Urban League um, is that we want to educate voters. We, you know, we put out information so that folks know Really, it's a progress report. Who is doing what for our community and who is falling short? Because as we're trying to move legislation nationally, we need to know who's been supportive of the Voting Rights Act, who's been supportive of all of this voting rights legislation that is critical to moving the ball in any of these areas or any of the issues that we care about. I mean, that's where it all starts. Um, so what if your you issue know, is climate change, then you need to care about reclaiming our vote. If your issue is reproductive justice, you need to care about reclaiming our vote. If your issue is infrastructure, we wouldn't have gotten that infrastructure bill passed had we not delivered here in Georgia and brought our votes to the table. So we have to understand that no matter what it is, the issue that you care about in this country, it all goes back to that fundamental access to the ballot box. What advice would you give uh, to folks who've been watching all of this on the news, they feel helpless and not quite sure what to do, but they know they want to do something. Is there any advice you would give to, to folks that want to become more engaged in the fight to protect access to the ballot box? Well, first you can't give up and don't feel defeated because if, if I would have walked away every time somebody told me that I couldn't do something, I wouldn't be sitting here as the Congresswoman for Georgia's 5th Congressional District. I wouldn't be the first Black woman to ever chair the Democratic Party of Georgia. I definitely wouldn't have done the work to deliver Georgia's 16 Electoral College votes and two U.S. Senators. So don't get defeated, y'all, because every time someone tries to count us out, we know that we have more work to do. Georgia is the cradle of the civil rights movement. And we saw what happened in the civil rights movement. And you can't look at it in just one election cycle because this is so much bigger than one campaign, one person on the ballot. This is so much bigger than that. So find someone that you believe in, that candidate that you believe in, that organization that you believe in and get involved because there is so much work for all of us to do. And this fight is far from over. So get involved, get engaged, check your voter registration, check your friends around you because you never know. People move, they need to update their registration or in the state of Georgia, our secretary of state continues to purge voters from the rolls. So make sure that it's updated, make sure that you're checking in on your friends. If you're tuning in from Georgia, the primary election is May 24th. No matter where you live, it's not just about the November elections, y'all. You gotta look at all of the elections and show up every time. So show up to vote, check on your friends and neighbors and find someone that you believe in and step up and start volunteering. And also find some joy because this gets hard. It really does. And so today we had a DJ and we were able to hang out on the campus and get some sunshine. And I mean, it's okay to have fun while you're doing this work. 
Absolutely. And, and, and I think it's also to remind, important to remind people, yes, there are primaries coming up in Georgia. There are primaries coming up in most of these, you know, most of your states. So you really need to be focused on that. Uh, the registration deadline in Georgia, that's April 25th of this month? Correct. The primary is May 24th. Early voting starts May 2nd. So you can wow. still vote early. It's a condensed window, but we need to take advantage of it. Absolutely, folks. Please take advantage of it. You don't want to be in the position where, unfortunately, you're pressed against the wall, you're weighted to the last minute, and you know that's when things become a lot more difficult and people are going to be very vigilant and, and, and looking at what's happening at the polls. You really want to make give yourself as much time and in the event that there is, you have a challenge at the poll, that you have the opportunity to address it and, and have it corrected to make sure that your vote can count. Um, we have to be thoughtful. We have to think before thinking in this. And that's the reason that we are launching our Reclaim Your Vote campaign now in April. We can't wait till May. We can't wait till November. We have to start thinking about these things now Start asking the questions. There, is, there, are, there are answers to every question that you have, but it all starts with first asking the question and knowing uh, the information that is relevant to where you are and where you're voting because it's constantly changing. Um, Representative Williams, it has been a joy to have you on with us. And I just wanna give uh, you a few minutes to close us out and give us any final thoughts any words of wisdom that you would love to share with our viewers this evening? So stay encouraged, y'all. There is a reason that we're launching right here in Georgia. I am proud to be partnering with the National Urban League today, reclaiming your vote because it is your vote. It is your power. You got to reclaim it, y'all. Don't let people get you down. When we think about where we are in this country and where we've come as a people, we know that it's never been easy. This work doesn't happen overnight. And so we have to stay encouraged, encourage each other. And I'm going to leave you with the words of Nelson Mandela. It always seems impossible until it's done. Let's get it done and reclaim your vote, y'all. I love that. Let's get it done. Representative Williams, thank you so much, Congresswoman, for your leadership, for your activism. And thank you for showing up with us today in, in, at Clark Atlanta University in the heart of Atlanta, the AUC. It was so good to be with you. Got us all fired up. We are ready to go out and make sure we reclaim our vote. Good to see y'all. See you later. See ya. Thanks for tuning in, y'all. We'll see you next time. Remember, the time for justice is always now.